<laughs> I have three mics up here. One of them works. One of them works. Yes. Yay! All right, so pretend we just did an opening thing where somebody announced what the hell this is because we don't have the people who normally do the opening at first squared with us. Okay? So everyone clap like someone just announced I was coming up to take you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, stop clapping. All right. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to The Late Show with Boozy Badger. I am your host, Boozy. How are you tonight? Oh! It's a small crowd, but it's a happy crowd. I like to hear that. How many of you had nothing better to do? It's okay, they don't invite me to the room parties either. We know why. Have you all been following the news? Oh, you gotta follow the news. Otherwise, how would you know that KFC and Crocs are going into a partnership? What? I uh, shit you not, KFC and Crocs have gone into a partnership to develop a croc that oh, smells yeah. like fried chicken. God bless, this is what I'm White America's trash about. foot fetishists are rejoicing. That's what America's all about, man. Said one, it's toe looking oh, good. Oh my god! Okay, fried it was revealed this week that apparently with Rance Priebus, the President of the United States, Donald Trump, yes it pains me to say that too, was obsessed with badgers and would ask numerous questions about badgers, such as, are they cuddly and are they dangerous? As a Bernie supporter, the answer is no and yes. May I speak for all badgers, though, as I stand up here and scream wordlessly for the next three hours about that. Fox News had a piece today about whether or not it was appropriate to go on a first date on Valentine's Day. I really don't think you should be getting your dating advice from Fox News. <laughs> also, today on Fox and Friends, a couple got married. You probably shouldn't be getting your marriage advice from Fox News. <laughs> British discount retailer Poundland announced today that they had sold $40,000 worth of discount engagement rings in the lead up to Valentine's Day. One, isn't that kind of like going to Walmart to buy your engagement ring? Two, I just learned Poundland isn't the name of an adult amusement park. <laughs> Online is basically their dollar tree. <laughs> Look I believe that was the ferret. You'll thank us later. Are you all ready for the show? Yeah! Woo! Wonderful, wonderful. I want to bring out my co-host as I edge my way around the OSHA death trap that is this stage. <laughs> Seriously, let's put the cripple on the smallest stage we have. That's a wonderful idea. Hold on. The con's insured, so this all works out in the end. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for my co-host on this. He's co-host us at Anthrocon. He took over the show for me at Fur Reality when I was absent. Please, big round of applause for Iggy. Woo! How are y'all doing? Yeah. Well, good. Tired. Very tired. But we're here. It's only Friday. These lights are very bright. Is your mic on? I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, no. I no. can't see it. Oh. Are we on now? There we go. There you go. I'm blinded. Iggy, how have you been? I, I've been. It's, it's been a time. It's um, been a time? I see you shave. The years have been cruel, and this is what happened and came out the other side. Like, like you've shaved since the last time I saw you. Yeah. Well, you were at, well, you were at For Reality. That would be the last time. Well, MFF, too. MFF, yeah. I, I love it. He forgot MFF. Iggy, where did I sleep at MFF? <laughs> No, Iggy, where did I sleep at MFF? Where where they put the Cat 5 cable? The floor. In whose room? Uh, my room. Do you just have fat white guys sleeping on your floor so often you forget who they are? <laughs> like, the last time you saw me was for oh wait, no, you were at MFF. Yeah, that was me. You're a loud masturbator. You know, you know before <laughs> I met you, someone was like, yeah, boozy. I'm like, who? <laughs> I didn't know you were. Oh yeah, sure, boozy. Okay, I that always, works. I always question when I see you and you're clean shaven. 
whether you've actually shaved or whether your beard just finally gained sentience and left. <laughs> the roast tomorrow night is in remembrance of beard number two. Yeah, that, I, I have to tell you, I saw Iggy last year here at First Square. He is your uh, 2019 First Square guest of honor. Another round of applause. Let me ask, how many of you were at First Square 2019? How many of you knew Iggy was your guest of honor? There are significantly less hands up in the audience for the second there question. There were two! His face is on metal! Like, I saw him at First Square 2019. He had shaved to play the part of your casino manager. I looked at him, my first thought was, who is this fucking goober? I had, I had performed with Iggy several times by that point. <laughs> It is very disconcerting to see you without your beard, but I'm glad you're up here with me tonight. It's a pleasure. I promise I won't make you chase Chris the comedy bun around the area. Isn't that what we have, this this box over here? That, that, that box over there? No. No. That, was that an Amazon box they just left I, here? I don't know what the box is. Some weirdo set it up and walked back off stage. Oh. Iggy, uh, we have a top ten list again. Oh, we do. We yes. have a top ten list. In the uh, great tradition of top ten lists here on The Late Show, this was written once again 15 minutes ago in my hotel room while I was drinking Kaltamushis. Were you on the floor this time? No, I was not. Oh, good. Yeah, that's later. <laughs> so, to this top ten list uh, is the top ten worst Valentine messages you can receive. Worst Valentine worst messages? Worst Valentine message. Number ten... You'll do. <laughs> Number nine, I love you slightly more than Melania loves Donald. Number eight, to whom it may concern. Number seven, it's almost midnight, so you're running out of choices. Number six, the ball gag's a gift for both of us. Number five, do you want to get a pizza and fuck? No? Do you want more than a pizza? You don't like pizza? <laughs> Number four, sorry I lied about being on the pill. Oops. Number three, lobster is cliche, so this year I got you crabs. Number two, you take my breath away, please loosen the noose. And number one is any message that is signed from Alkali. <laughs> That was a really that was that, that, Yeah, that, that was like, I, I was not sober. <laughs> like, I love Alkali. He's one of my closest friends, but he's just such a big target. <laughs> so, uh, now that we have that done, is, uh, is the train backstage? Yes. I can't see him, but it's okay. He can't see me. Yeah, he can't see us either. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big late show welcome to our first guest of the evening, Satrine the Husky. Wherever. Like this really is the most ADA non-compliant stage I've ever been on. Oh, I'm oh, I'm doing good, sweetheart. You're doing fine. He's probably going to need a microphone. Yeah, let's uh, get on. Do, 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 do. I don't have a stand. Do, do, do. I have a stand. Can you move that one really quick? Thank you. I didn't know if it was like set for being set. It can be reset. Cool. So, Trey, this is what, your fourth time being on this? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Like, don't you ever get tired of this? Yeah, but you, you know, I always get messages in Braille from you, so you take the time to message me, so hell, I'll help. I message you in Braille. He has a touch screen phone. Yeah, they make those for good reason. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, one more hand for Citrine the Husky. Isn't that what Boozy's car did on the way here? No, no, no. My car did not stall on the way here. It went into a snowbank on the way here. Those are two completely different things. But if you tried to start it, wouldn't it have stalled? No, it, it started just fine. It just oh. wasn't moving. You could rev the engine, but it wasn't going anywhere, much like my sex life. No, oh. You know that's a lie. I have four kids, allegedly. <laughs> 
to stop looking down. I'm being blinded every time. You're you being blinded. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my world, honey. <laughs> Is it just a sea of lights? Oh my god. It's really bright. Alright, oh. you are in. Great. That's sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Citrine the Husky. I'm going to do a song for you guys that's um, about when I was on a plane and I thought about puns and um, it's got a little bit deeper meaning. This is off my uh, new album that comes out at Motor City Fur Con, so it's called In Plain Sight. <laughs> Citrine, you need to take a bath. They're giving you a standing ovation. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, everybody's on their feet. Okay. I want to know if you're just bullshitting. Oh, I'm definitely just bullshitting. Um, <laughs> it seems cruel. I, I know. Like the, the thing you have to understand, Citrine and I have been talking for a couple years now. Yeah. And I will get messages from Citrine. He's like, are you going to this con? And I'm like, yeah. And they'll send me a message. He goes, I can't wait to see you there. <laughs> and then there'll be a long pause, and he'll send, get it? <laughs> <laughs> My first experience with you, Citrine, uh, really on that, though, is we were last year, or two years ago, at Indy Furcon doing the Roast of Pandas. Mm -hmm. uh, Citrine did a wonderful musical number, and the crowd gave, really did give him a standing ovation on their feet, clapping, uh, it was an amazing time, and I stood up, and I gave him part of that standing ovation in the back of my head. I thought, you know, we didn't really need to stand. <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> You've had a busy year. Uh, yeah, it's actually been a pretty crazy year. Well, which year, like, like 2019 or? It's a microphone. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Metal penis, nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the new bad dragon line. I like it. <laughs> kind of hands on. I like this. Yeah, you you have it, but you have had a very you had an album come out earlier this year or um, last year. Um, so last year, I I don't know why I've just kind of been uh, recording as much as possible because I had never released an album um, in the fandom at all. I'd been writing since I was like twelve years old, but always kind of thought, eh, this isn't good enough. This isn't, and uh, so in two thousand seventeen at Indie Furcon, I wrote forever, and then after that. Uh, People seemed to like it, so I kept writing, and then I decided to put an album together. First album came out, to, uh, and, uh, what was it, Fur Reality 2018, titled Love is Blind, because yeah, I'm a jackass. And um, so then, uh, last year, 2019, I had uh, three albums come out. I had um, A Storm's Rolling In come out for Anthro Ohio, and then I had In My Mind uh, come out for... Uh, for reality again, and then uh, at Midwest Fur Fest, I released a Christmas EP, and like I said, uh, Motor City Furcon, um, they're having me as one of their uh, guests of honor this year, so I thought, well, I need to give something back. So that's when I worked on the album that you just heard the title track from, In Plain Sight. I, and so you're the guest of honor at Motor City Furcon this year? Yeah, and I, I, I haven't asked them yet, but I'm curious if it had anything to do with the year being 2020, and I can't see where shit, I'm not sure. <laughs> Just that curiosity just makes me wonder. You, I, I have to say you're a step up from their last guest of honor. <laughs> I, uh, that, guy, that guy was kind of an asshole. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so what, where can we see you coming up? Uh, so my con schedule as it stands for the rest of this year, for certain, uh, Gateway Fur Meet in St. Louis, Missouri is in March. And then, as I said, Motor City Fur Con in Michigan. Uh, then Anthro Ohio will be in May, uh, and then Anthrocon once again this year, uh, and then Indie Furcon. Uh, Megaplex is a new one that I got invited to uh, in August, so we'll, we'll figure out that. But doing two cons in one month, I should be able to swing it. Um, and then Fur Reality and Midwest Fur Fest, so about nine cons this year, including this one. Well, Trade, I'm always, as always, I want to thank you for coming on. I, I always love having you up here. You're one of my favorite performing acts uh, up here. That's right, you assholes backstage. You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you so much. It was so fun uh, tramping a cupcake or two with you. Tra oh, yeah. yeah. Like, we almost kissed. Oh, yeah. Like, it, like, it was close. close. I was like, dude. Like, I didn't know you had facial hair. And he's like, dude, I have facial hair. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. He's like, I learned you have a little bit of facial hair. And I'm like, I don't have a little bit. Man. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, the I'm, cupcake. I'm also slightly overweight. <laughs> <laughs> I have some mobility issues. <laughs> Citrine, thank you so much for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, Citrine the Husky. Thank you so much. Watch out. Watch out? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, well, just the guitar, lift the guitar. And now, yep, you're good. Right. Folks, once more for Citrine the Husky. Con continuing our theme here of visually challenged performers, I'd like to invite someone up on stage who has once again appeared on The Late Show many times. You've seen him at several things. Uh, the Dragon Show. You've seen him tonight on Three-Headed Monster. You'll see him tomorrow as we roast him. Ladies and gentlemen, if he can manage to get up without tripping, please welcome Xander the Blue. Oh, you see, I love you because you don't come out and say, I have an act. You come out and say, I'm just going to sit in the chair. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh, I got a new rock working mic. Hooray. Hi, Boozy. Hi, Xander. Sorry. So what's, what's happened since the last time we chatted? Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> it's crazy how busy you can be while still being unemployed. It's basically a short version of that story. <laughs> but... <laughs> Before we get there, I just want to say, like, uh, I was the art director and I did all the art when we first started First Squared, and I love it seeing it now because it's so much better than what I did. <laughs> it's great because I'm like, aha, 
technically, I made this happen. <laughs> like, it's some shitty part of my brain. So I was like, ah, oh, yes. They had to replace my shitty yard with theirs, so I will take your uh, gratitude residuals, please. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's kind of like raising a child. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You fuck up a lot, and then someone else takes over, and it turns out okay. Oh, shit. That happens a lot in my life, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, just... <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so you're getting roasted tomorrow night. Yeah, that's going to be fun. I, I have a feeling that's not the first time you've been roasted in your life. I'm in a fursuit, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm kind of getting, like, scorched right here, and I'm wearing red. Uh, I mean, I'm surrounded by comedians, so y'all just take the piss out of me all the time anyway, so. No, that's a different kink. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm mixing up my slang. That's like a British thing. <laughs> Taking take, the piss. They take something the piss else. out of you. I love that. That's, that's weird. I didn't know you were into that. That's a, wait, who's, who does that? The take the piss? Like, take it somewhere? <laughs> it's so weird to me. That means, like, making fun of something is taking the piss. You've heard that, right? Yes, I, I have heard of taking the piss. All right, maybe we can get Fox in here and talk about it. Maybe get, get, uh, Isn't there, like, a phrase that's, like, take a row? Like, you take a row and then you take a piss? Take a row? Yeah, you take a row. This is a, this is a UK thing. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. He was always telling tell me about taking a pew, too. Because everyone goes to church, apparently. It's called taking the pesh. The pesh? There you go! Pesh. Taking the pesh. What? Is it carbonated? <laughs> Why is it the pesh? With all the iron brew there, yes it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I, I also understand that marijuana has now become legal. In the, yeah. How's that working out for you? I've been really busy, boozy. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny, actually, since it went legal, it's harder to get. Because, like, basically, like, you get the huge lines on the weekend, and then there's, like, everyone wants green, and everyone has the pens now, so they, like, got their Harry, Harry Potter wands, and it's great. So, but, yeah, we're at a shortage right now. It's a Harry Potter wand. You, you, you... You cast a spell on your consciousness. <laughs> and it's free. And it's great when you go into the, in the dispensary. They're like, "Oh, do you want do you want THC or CBD?" Like, it's really cute. If by CBD you mean like sh Chicago's best drug. <laughs> I, I have to ask: Have you ever considered going to the dispensary in Fursu just to fuck with people? Oh fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? That'd be great. Like, like, he's, we gotta cut him off. <laughs> it's a dragon in a Hawaiian shirt. This is worse than pajama pants. <laughs> I have. I've gone to the dispensary like three times in pajama pants. Like, ugh. Oh. I am such a stereotype right now. This is just the worst. Wearing pajama pants in public, I've always considered that kind of your way to tell the world you've given up. Yeah, but I feel I, like I'm proud of that, kind of. It's weird. Yeah, but, you know, whatever. Are pants or pants. Are these shops really like the new Walmart of 2 a.m.? Yeah. Like, like, what? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, okay, why is pajama pants, why is it plaid on your pants is, means you're lazy, but it's on your chest, it's okay. <laughs> You're a fucking lumberjack if you're wearing a shirt that's plaid, but if you're pants, you're just a stoner? Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay, all right, I don't make the rules. Because the lumberjacks don't sit on the couch eating hot pockets. <laughs> well, you're either stoner, it's Christmas, Maybe? so either one. <laughs> anyway, what else? Anyway. <laughs> ah, god damn it, I did it. So what, what has been going on in Xander World there? Uh, well... Didn't do in the Dragon Show or trying to uh, when Alkali is allowed out of the stock room with all the China things happening. Uh, I, that is the worst way to put that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> the China, exper the Chinese experience. That 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 does not sound better than the. That's China the restaurant thing. across the that, street. That I swear to God. The China syndrome. <laughs> that, they're changing that after it closes down. <laughs> Hey. I'm thinking of like a Doobie Brothers song mixed with like this China coronavirus thing and it just kind of goes on for 15 minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. Like an old 70s song. Yeah, that China Groove. The one the song no one remembers the name to it. It just goes on forever and it's pretty groovy. Is that Doobie Brothers? Doobie Brothers song. Oh, yeah. I miss those things. Oh. We're old. Sorry, guys. Uh, We're going to yeah. just reminisce about old things here. I mean, 
Well, uh, do, do you have anything else you would like to, to uh, say? Yeah, just check out Dragon Show. I might be doing an art Patreon with 3D things if you enjoy things filling each other's holes with things like that, if that interests you. <laughs> if that interests you. <laughs> what I'm saying is Alkali does a cooking show where he puts meat in the oven. What the hell are you thinking? No, okay. Uh, but yeah, he does do a cooking show. But anyway. Yeah, I, I love the way you phrase that. We're going to be doing a show where you put things in holes. Is that what you said? Well, yeah. I mean, you could be, pretty much be saying anything. Right? I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to. At some point, someone told me that you may have a profile on certain adult websites. Oh, no. And my thought process at that time was, certainly, he would not simply have the name Xander the Blue on those <laughs> websites. And I was wrong. <laughs> so I am very familiar with you putting things in holes at oh, this point Jesus. in my life. Uh, you thought I'd have a porn name? Like, do, so cute. Do you want me to be honest? Uh, I hope you die before me. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I am bringing a montage to your funeral. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll be a great funeral. Hopefully my parents are, aren't there. Like, they're gonna die too. <laughs> it's okay. You buy one, get two free. <laughs> Xander, thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, guys. This has been dark conversations tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Xander the Blue. Now, you have seen them at every goddamn convention. Like, no shit. If three furries are sitting in a Burger King for lunch, you look over and somehow they've set up a merch table in the corner. <laughs> One of them's from Scotland, which means technically he's Braveheart. <laughs> the, the other one is from Arizona, which means I believe by law he's considered an AARP member at this point. <laughs> Can I have a big welcome? for foxes and peppers. <laughs> that came dangerously close to spilling my coffee and nothing else. <laughs> Look, Boozy, is this a real hundo? Yes. <laughs> That's right, you saw it here, Pepper, stealing charity money. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> what time is it? Showtime? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if that's a trick question. <laughs> Boozy, this is here by a hostile interview. Oh, no. Here, let me, <laughs> I'm, I'm getting over here. I'm getting out of this. Is it the AARP <laughs> joke? Is that... Is that what set this up? Go ahead. Look, That one doesn't work. Here, I got to pick it up. Oh! That one doesn't work either. Do not throw the microphone. Did you want to say a few words? I swear, this is the most discomforting stare down I've ever had with a man with a guitar. You think I would say the only one, but no. <laughs> How do you think we feel every time in goddamn rehearsal? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Boozy, this is the time where we test each other, where we find out if we'll be a good hunting pair. <laughs> Are you gonna crawl down a small pipe together? No. Specifically. Hold the, hold the mic harder, you bitch! <laughs> okay. Specifically, I will chase down the prey, and if they run into a burrow, Boozy will burrow after them. That is what I do. And that is how the symbiotic relationship of fucking crack-headed German Shepherd and atta <laughs> attack weasel <laughs> becomes the fucking one-two punch of the small woodland creature animal kingdom. We are apex predators as the, the goddamn punch brothers. I'm an angry pillow. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like Chris Pratt. Like Chris Pratt. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I'm not here to win. I'm here to make friends. <laughs> this is like I'm having an interview with Randy Quaid right now. It's a little unsettling. I think Eric Andre would be kind of freaked out by this. <laughs> are we going to do a harsh song? So hold up. Look, this is a bit. Are you ready for it? Yes. 
So people, do you have any questions? This is the worst interview I've ever been in. I don't know what you're doing, sir. <laughs> like, I don't know what I expected, but I don't think I expected the... Uh, What's your greatest wish? My greatest wish? For this to end. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's very, I don't know why I expected the ginger guy who moved to a place where it's like 120 degrees to not be unsettling, but okay. Look, I have not experienced like zero in uh, many a fortnight. <laughs> I used to live in Pennsylvania, but now I live in Phoenix, specifically Glendale. And for the last couple weeks, it's been really shivery. Uh, we, it's, it's been a nice, a nice, a nice frigid... 45 degrees <laughs> at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. I will point you. you. Look, you laugh, but we had a frost. <laughs> we, had to, we had to shut down the municipal airport. <laughs> but I have not experienced having a, what's it called? A brain freeze from the outside. <laughs> And many moons, and then I dared to to enter the mall. There's no sidewalk. You just get to walk down the street until a car gets mad, <laughs> and then you try to edge over towards the snowbank and just go like, "Come on, man! Like, what do you want me to do?" And they pass you. Uh, this this has got horribly off the rails. So since since we're on the subject of weather, this is something mostly just the UK because the rest of Europe's like they don't. They're not as immature as us. <laughs> They're not as immature as you? <laughs> no, so basically what happens is, you know how this, this whole thing where you name a storm that's coming, like Hurricane, Irma, or Andrew? We've started doing that over in the UK now, especially Scotland, and we're just calling them things like Hurricane Ball Bag. <laughs> Hurricane Ball <laughs> Stupid ass shit like that. <laughs> Hurricane Butt Sack. Here we go. No, that, that is that's, actually what's the equivalent of Ball Bag. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, last year they actually had Hurricane Tammy. Here in the U.S., yeah. My, my sister's called uh, tomorrow. It wasn't actually that bad. Uh, that's the one next year, Hurricane Tammy with an I. Oh. <laughs> did you just did you just hear what? Um, so you said someone's name was Tammy, and and Fox. What you said? Oh, Tammy. That's why I call my sister because yeah. she's Tamara. Her, her full name is what? Tamara. Tamara. So I like how, like, who here knew that Tammy was short for Tamara? <laughs> Because I definitely, like, today I learned. T-I-L. So I like how you can go from, like, the lady who at the Texas Roadhouse is going to complain about her steak six times. Tammy. To an elven queen. Tamar, Tamara. This is Tamara, the... It's Russian! Oh my god. That was that was it. That's the point of that bit. I'm pretty sure it's Russian. Hang on. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look God damn it! Do not Google your sister's name on stage. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, no, I'm curious now. <laughs> this this interview has gone wildly off the rails. So wait, does so so just, does Tamara complain about Tierna ne Tierna Nagog Nagnog? I can't even no. say it. Tierna Nagog. Yeah. Tierna Nagnog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Republic, Georgia, Hungary, palm tree. Serbia. Palm tree. They googled his sister's name on stage. <laughs> okay. We have one more bit. Yes, sir. Do you have any, do you have any questions in this interview? <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, like, I have a lot of questions after, after this interview. Uh, <laughs> give us one question. Riddle me this. What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> A better question! <laughs> no, that is the question of all time right now. <laughs> okay, so here's my final bit. I see you're all very hyped for this. We're so waiting with so we're part. very we're very famous for a, a certain for a horse a song about a horse, right? Like we're oh, no. that seems to be we've not only we've exited the the, the blast radius of the earth and we have orbited into from furriness to to, to to troll streamer songs to YouTube uh, pranks we have we're now part of the permanent internet culture for for a, for a song about a horse what's your favorite kind of horse boozy we're here to ask you that What's your favorite horse? I feel like if I answer it correctly, you're gonna knife me. Better question, what's your favorite pop culture horse? 
My favorite pop culture horse? I die. I die. Honestly. Real or animated? Real or animated? Yeah, just any Are you trying to get me to say a My Little Pony? Oh, well, so I'm not trying to. I have no. I have no. Uh, Apple gay Jack. <laughs> Bojack. Bojack. There you go. Okay, guys. Are you ready for the payoff? <laughs> <laughs> Sober enough to do this? No. <laughs> I was asked to do this panel two hours ago, and it was too late. <laughs> I had already, I had already Give me a, eaten. Give me a... My lovely, lovely, lovely horse. My lovely, my lovely horse. Shower you with sugar lumps and ride you over fences, polish your hooves every single day, and bring you to the horse dentist. <laughs> my lovely, lovely, lovely horse, my lovely horse, my lovely horse, running through, running through the Where are you going with the man on your back? Like a train in the night, yeah. Like a train in the night. <laughs> oh, did, did you mean another horse song? Because we could do that. Oh my god. <laughs> Just the way it. Oh. <laughs> so our argument was um, uh, Fox had no instrument to play because I have the guitar, and that means I have the pants in this musical relationship. <laughs> Because uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to melodicize me, Captain? You can't do shit with that. So. <laughs> ha! Fox, we were going to make you sing, remember? Yeah. Will you sing the first verse? Will you... <laughs> take, take this man. <laughs> you do the upper octave, I'll do the lower. Wait, at the same time? Yes. <laughs> oh my, Let's oh my it. god. Here we go. Let's see if I can remember the words. Is that a Dallas jersey? <laughs> I, wow, that I, went from no. A to Z. <laughs> <laughs> that's a green... Oh, that's a Blackhawks St. Patrick's Day jersey. Dang. Sorry, I thought I spied with my little eye. I'm genuinely not sure what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> the minty, fresh Dallas Stars jersey. Okay. Run, sir. See, uh, <laughs> Boozy, do you remember what you said to me when you said, uh, Pepper, please be on my show? Actually, I think I said, hey, do you want to do the late show? And you know, I have a number of regrets in my life. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what I said? Uh, sh what time is it? Ah! <laughs> 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 Today. I quickly turn my face before I start to blush Cause frankly there is nothing I can say I always had a thing for pushing the extremes And I just got a thing you won't find in the magazine <laughs> When you, look at, when you look at it, does it make it even worse? <laughs> Those were an assortment of words you've now yelled into my left ear, Fox. Good. Some of those were even the right ones. <laughs> there is no cock like horse cock. Send your asshole in the shock. You need more cock like horse cock. You have done my inside. You have. Really? Your, your guess for the words were what, Fox? Can you do that again? Everybody. Serious question. How many times has Pepper forgotten his lyrics? <laughs> You want to keep this going, baby? 
words back up. Oh, you need the words? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't remember what comes after. Dark, 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 dark. How, are, dark, how, how do you not remember the horse cock song by now? You just get four hours of I asked to remember what verse I'm on. You're shaft boy. Grab the lube and slam the day away. My shaft is quivering and my balls are turning blue. And I think I'm drinking in the foot of or even two. Of my favorite stallion that I keep in my top drawer. Slipping in and I'll be dripping goo. Can you guys do this clap pattern? Stomp, clap, 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 stomp, clap, 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 stomp, clap, clap. One, two, try again. Stomp, clap, 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 stomp, clap, 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 clap. One, two, three. Oh, God, I'm sick. Fox, you can't take away the lyrics. I can, I just need to sit there. It's a little bit. No. Damn, your perseverance. As I take more cock, horse cock, shut the door and turn the lock. Is your cock a horse cock? Stretch out my insides and make me brave. What do you what do you gotta say to that, Mr. Conan O'Brien? Are you done? <laughs> no, 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 no. As a member of the Pennsylvania Bar. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen and others, please a round of applause for Foxes and Peppers. Thank you, guys. Pepper, I will ask you to hand the charity hundo you put in your back pocket to the chairman on your way out the door. What? Like Fine. 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 He just threw the shirt in. Fine. Thank you for reminding me. I would have woken up. Where did I get $100? Why don't I remember how I got $100? What did I do? Can I share a quick relevant story to that song? Yes, you may. By the way, I, I do want to say I'm going to wait for him to buckle up the case and move slightly off stage before my next comment. I, should, should I wait for the I, comment? I, I, I want him just far enough away that he has to get past other people to get back to me. <laughs> I swear to God, that's the first time I was scared a musician was going to ship me. <laughs> like you sitting there going, the cracked out German Shepherd. I'm like, dude, you look like a meth addict right now. <laughs> um, so, can, really quick, because i got to go deal with a thing. Uh huh? Who was here when Pepper Coyote was the musical artist of honor many years ago? Anyone? Who was here for his Sunday hangover show? Who here remembers the issue I had? Oh, you might not. Oh, you're going to learn a thing. Okay. So Pepper was in this room with the stage set up there in the front. Not like this. I actually really like this. And he was going through and he's doing his hangover show. It was technically all ages, but it was the hangover show, so you didn't know what was going to happen. So I come in and I'm like, oh, this song sounds kind of like rock. That, that has references. And then the chorus hits. The first one. And right as it hits, those double doors are wide open. And a parent and two small children walk immediately by as Horsecock the Chorus is going on. <laughs> they looked horrified, and I immediately got up mid-song, ran down the center, and closed the doors. Then on the other side, I'm like, oh, glad that's taken care of. And then I had a thought. There's an air wall. And on that other side of an air wall is an all-ages dealer den, noon at Sunday. So I go in, and I go to the dealers along this wall, and very silently I go like, Hey, did you happen to hear anything next door? Someone a couple tables down, magnificently overheard, overheard stood up and shouted, Oh, you mean the song about horse cock? <laughs> and that's how the dealer's den learned about that song that year. Here's a hundred for your charity. <laughs> Thank you. While I while I have you here. Oh no. Give me your hat. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we do everything that I'm on for charity. We don't know who charity is, but when we find her, we got a lot of money saved up for her. <laughs> Boo. Did you get that song I told you to get? Oh god, no. Oh no. 
That's a no. Give and we'll stop the music. <laughs> what is this? You know. Ow! Oh. Pay attention! <laughs> Did you sign the waiver? No! Those poor animals in their cages. We need for you to save them. Only you. The lone fact. If you don't get the donation call for the con, we have a 22 rifle out back. We all jell them. Notice the money going into the hat yet? Oh, I want to rescue a puppy! I'm, a, I'm definitely allergic to those, so no to those. Someone else has to rescue the kittens. Ladies and gentlemen, fur with his interpretive dance. Okay, that's going to make me cry more than the song. I don't know, that's the con chair. Stop right now. Okay, we can make right it stop now. now. Yes! Right now. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there's change again. Oh, wait, there's more money coming in. Oh, I love the fact that I've got Fox back there on the melodica doing this. Yeah. Okay, do you still need me? No, you're good now. Do you need this? No, you're good now. Okay, thank you. you thank you, you, you everybody. You can take that to charity. That's our commercial break for the charity money. <laughs> Thank you for supporting the charity. <laughs> now, you know, the fun thing is, is we do this show at a bunch of different conventions. Uh, it's always a little different each time. We do an Anthrocon every year. Last year at Anthrocon, uh, we did the late show. We played, we actually do have like some commercials like Bob's Baby Butter, making every baby better. Uh, the Wash Your Damn Fursuit Coalition, things that people have actually recorded for this that we play during that. And then we always queue up in the arms of the angel at Anthrocon to, uh, to get people to give money. Well, last year I said to AV, I said, roll the song, and they said, we can't, and I said, okay. And we sat there for a moment, I said, okay, guys, really, I wasn't fucking joking, roll the song. And they said, we weren't fucking joking, the soundboard's down. Uh and there's silence as I have a standoff with A.V. across the secondary event stage at Anthrocon. And a very small voice from the A.V. table said, I mean, we can sing it. <laughs> so that's what we did. <laughs> Folks, your next act tonight is someone that you know, that I know, that we all love. Please give a big hand for this gentleman as he comes to the stage, because given the way his life goes, this may be the last time you see him. <laughs> Folks, fur! I can yell! Yeah. Don't drop the <laughs> I'm AV, I'm allowed to do it. <laughs> Unlike the rest of y'all, I prepared a statement. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> and it froze. Never mind. It just walks off. Alright, so do you guys want a story or do you want a piece of advice? Story. Yeah. Story. Oh, piece of advice. Piece of advice it is. All right, so are any of you guys undeniable cheapskates like me? Yeah. Are any of you, do any of you know the thrill, the wonder, the love that is sneaking food into a movie theater? Yeah. Are any of you, do any of you get the same wonderful thrill of pulling the Twix out of your packet, out of your pocket at a movie theater? Have any of you gone to see Cats just for the wonder to get food into the theater and have no one catch you. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, both another, I have found the best thing to sneak into a movie theater. It is a goddamn rotisserie chicken. <laughs> no, 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 I know what you're saying. 
green, fur, you're weird, what are you talking about? Think about it. Rotisserie chicken checks off every single, uh, every single checkbox of the sneak into a movie theater experience. Is it loud? And really smelly? Yes. Is it well over a thousand calories? Checkaroonie. Is it super unhard? Is it super easy to hide? Yes. What are you saying? Don't worry. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to solve every problem in your life, starting with this chicken thing. So the first thing you do is you go to your local supermarket. If you live within a hundred miles of one, you know that they have rotisserie chickens there. All you have to do is buy two rotisserie chickens. And make sure when you're checking out to pay with cash because the government is tracking you. After you throw away the decoy, the decoy rotisserie chicken, simply slide the second one up your shirt so it protrudes from your chest. Now, you're gonna say, this is hot, this is gonna burn me. Don't worry, savor that heat, savor that pain. Like the lionfish savors all native Florida uh, fish in the Florida waterways. <laughs> I should really regionalize my jokes better. <laughs> now, me, you have to walk very calmly and very carefully to the movie theater, not to let anyone see that you have a rotisserie chicken hidden underneath your shirt. When you go through the turnstile to get the chicken, if someone says, hey, what is that rotisserie chicken looking lump under your shirt? You should say, mind your own business, which will shut them up 100% of the time. If someone says, hey, what's all those juices dripping down your shirt? You just simply explain, oh, that is the natural secretions that all humans produce to protect themselves from the sun, and they will laugh knowingly. Now, once you get inside of the movie theater, be sure, and this is important, be sure to buy a large Coke and a large popcorn to distract people and then throw it in the trash right where it deserves. And now here's the hardest part. Here's the hardest part. Once you get into the movie theater, you're going to pull that rotisserie chicken out from under your shirt. You are going to open it up and you're going to see from the walk from the grocery store here, it is going to be a congealed mess of meat and skin and bone. I know you're salivating, but please trust me on this. All you have to do is very, very delicately eat it. Think of it like a rat trying to eat a small meal. You're going to take small, delicate bites. Try not to do things like scream out, Oh boy, this is such a wonderful rotisserie chicken! Or, Man, this is the best food I've brought in from outside! <laughs> that will get you caught, I know! <laughs> the last bit, I can adv bit of advice I can give you is once you have sucked every little piece of meat from those bones, Simply just discard, the just discard the bones on the ground, right where they belong. The movie theater patrons that have to follow you will want to know how great and wonderful a person you were to have snuck in a rotisserie chicken into a movie theater. Thank you for inviting me. I know you were expecting a funky little story like everyone else, but no, I had to go esoteric. Good night! Yeah! Wait, interview part. No, you're good. All right, bye! <laughs> You took the working mic off stage. I got it. Oh, good. All right. So, folks, the way we get this panel approved is I promise some educational programming. So, uh, tonight we have a short presentation on the dangers of talking to strangers. And what is your name? Hi everyone, I'm Hannah Johnson, and as Mr. Badger said, he asked me ta to talk to your class about the dangers of talking to strangers. Isn't that going to be fun? Yeah, because the world's really fucked up, huh? Okay, I'm going to need a little help from my friends, though, to talk about such a complicated subject. Not that one. Here they are. Did you see there's process? <laughs> okay. All right. So, is everyone excited? Yeah! I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared too. Fair. <laughs> All right. This is my special friend, Chris, the safety bunny. Yeah. And this is my other friend, Dill. And they're here to make it Chris, Bill, clear what you should do when dealing with strangers. Yeah. 
Okay, now we're going down here. Ow. <laughs> 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 yeah, there we go. Perfect. Now it's going away. There it is. Yeah, we got it. Hang on. Scooch over. There we go. All right. <laughs> Okay, is everyone ready? <laughs> that was smooth. <laughs> okay, let's start. La 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 la. I'm just a little girl. I'm gonna go home and do my homework and read the Quran and comment positively on YouTube music videos. <laughs> Hey, yo, little girl, you're looking real attractive and young and such. Would you like to get in my van so as I can molest you? <laughs> I don't know. You look kind of scary, mister. Mmm, yeah, but I got candy. <laughs> That's fair. Oh. oh, no, my innocence. <laughs> drive you to Bible study and Jesus is going to be there. Doesn't the Bible say something about loving thy neighbor? Wink. <laughs> right? <laughs> hmm, that's true. And if God's going to, or Jesus is going to be there, well, hi dog. I'm in. Yeah. Oh no, my innocence again. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work out for Chris, huh? No, no it didn't. Can someone tell me how Chris fucked it up this time? He's the man. That's right. She still believes in human gods. Humans are flawed individuals with little to no willpower of their own. They should hand over their faith to a true creature and worship the and the, join the church of stockingtology. Oh. Right? And you <laughs> made fun of Scientology, it was with you. <laughs> so true. This is stockingtology, it's totally different. Yeah, it's Scientologists in the crowd today. <laughs> hey! Uh, <laughs> Hi! I'm a model little girl who's attracted to the wrong types of people. 
Yo, I'm those wrong types of people. <laughs> you sure are. But I don't want to get into your van. Well, yeah, but I got candy, among other temptations in here. Nope, not happening, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what if I told you it was Skittles? Okay, I did. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah, my innocence. Brought to you by Skittles. <laughs> I thought you had my back. I need those points. I am never going to transcend into an actual pure being of made of stuff, made of sock, if you don't help me out. Listen, HJ. I would do anything for a pack of Skittles. Anything. You hear that, audience? See me after the show. I'll suck anyone's dick in this room for a bag of Skittles. I like the taste of the rainbow. Chris, thank you. We're good. Thank you. I think that's it. We've had all our time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No, you're done. <laughs> I asked you to do a puppet show. <laughs> Is this why I kept getting messages on Telegram that were just tee hee hee? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and others, Chris the Comedy Bun. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought it couldn't get worse than, that's right, the Koran. <laughs> Damn, was I wrong. <laughs> Our next performer tonight is another one from the open mic that had a wonderful set up there. Folks, please put your hands together for Laney the Shepherd. <laughs> Langley. 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 Bob. Bob. I don't think I can top that, but anybody seen a fire recently? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it is, it's not my fault. But I have, throughout my life, have had a history of fires being major training points in my life, and I don't know why. Well. The first time, you know, start out small things. Smack your hand in a fire when you're itty bitty baby. Smack your hand, ow, whatever. Second time, I'm at Girl Scouts, the lovely Girl Scout bonfire. And I, like any raisin observer, light my marshmallow on fire. Me, being the smart, responsible person, flicks it. <laughs> this fiery hot ball of marshmallow lands on my friend and she's like like any reasonable person's like, oh my god, oh my god, get off! and i'm not allowed back there i don't know why that's how i got kicked out of girl scouts on to the next one i am 16 years old i didn't know what jello shots were and i ate 31 of them my boyfriend at the time finds me passed out by the fridge, all stumbly and all lovey, and I see the bonfire, this big, glorious, flaming ball, all alone, because it's fire, and my brain, big top thing, be like, that thing needs a hug. So I start walking, I start stumbling like I need to get there soon, and my boyfriend and his three drunk buddies are like, oh shit, she's running to the fire. As just as I'm falling into the fire, I'm like, that's a little hotter than I thought it should be. He grabs me by my ponytail and pulls me off. And he's like, what the fuck were you doing? I'm like, I was going to give it a hug. What do you think I was doing? And I wander off. Apparently, that's not the right answer. Now, cut to 18. 
brand new, very first job, working the dream, making bread while well, making bread. My manager comes out cursing like a sailor, screaming out, swearing off our shopkeeper, swearing that she quits. And he's like, well, who's going to be in charge? Points to me, she is. And like any reasonable 18 year old, I'm like, okay. It's cut six months later. I'm in charge and I've changed a deep fryer. We had a new grease and I've never changed a deep fryer before. It's not my fault they didn't train me. Ladies and gentlemen, I lit the grease fire. I lit the whole entire goddamn thing on fire and I'm like, oh shit, it's on fire. And so I go up to one of my, co my co-workers and I'm like, hey, sorry to inconvenience you, but do you know where the fire extinguisher is? And she just looks over, soulless, and just dead inside, and she's like, oh. I'm like, and she just stares at the fire for like a good five minutes, and I'm like, should we do something? She's like, nah. And so we just casually watch this fire. And like any rational adult, after that ten minutes, and she walked off, I put a lid on it. And then I turned off the heat, and the fire went out. And now we cut to my current job. I'm not allowed back at my bakery. Some reason, it's not working anymore. But now, I'm at a factory. Lovely, making filters. Two weeks ago, there was a fire coming down the assembly line. I didn't know filters could light like that. <laughs> and I'm watching it. Very like, oh shit, that's on fire. And my coworker's like, oh shit, that's on fire. And like any reasonable person, puts out the fire. And I'm just like, oh shit. But then he showed me how to put off the fire and pointed to a big turn off lever that says, in case of fires, turn off. It was to turn off the heat. Well, he was gone last week on vacation. And so, no one's in charge. We were like kids without an adult. And this one guy, he thinks he's in charge of everybody. And I'm like, okay. And then the fire happened again. The raging inferno of a filter just running down the line. And he panics. Everyone's screaming, trying to put out this fire. And I'm just like, there's a, there's a lever. There's a lever. But him, being smart, not really, grabs the plate, throws it on the ground, so the fire goes out. Afterwards, I walk up to him and say, that there's a lever that you just turn off. Anyway, I'm sorry that it didn't hit that well, but anyway, does anybody else know where any lighters are? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Not a Lonely the shepherd, everyone. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. I want to point out that the last two acts are now going to give this show a reputation. I'm sorry. Like, how was the late show with Boozy? Well, I mean, they were doing good. Then they talked about molesting children and arson. It's not my fault. It's definitely your fault. There is one common denominator in every story you just told. It's you. Hey, I almost lit my house on fire last week. Yeah, I see? <laughs> How was I supposed to know you're not supposed to keep the vent open when trying to start a fire in the Common chimney? Common sense. <laughs> you know, we, we, we should take... I, I don't have a microphone. So I'm just going to yell, we all hate you. You know what we should do? We should take Chris's show and your show and just have it be St. Elmo's Fire. Ah! Ah! Lonely, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Folks, once again, for Lonely the Shepherd. Also, there's a fire at this con. Do not look at me. We're all going to look at you now. If there's a fire at this con, I will die in my bed. Because it is like zero degrees out there, and I sleep in the nude. Don't worry. We'll I do not need frostbitten balls. That's how I go out. <laughs> Folks, I have two more acts for you tonight. Let's bring up the first of the last. Status the Ferret.
plug this in? That'd be cool. Yes. Uh, plugs down there? That'd be cool. Do you see it? I do. All right. And you want to see it? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Now you may recognize Status, they're a long time performer with the Dragon Show. They actually wrote the Dragon Show theme song. I did. Uh, they also do Midnight at several cons now. Yeah. Their own panel, which they started running. I was I was lucky enough to be on it at Anthro, Ohio. Uh, I was lucky on it. I was on it for half of it and then I discovered that there was a rallies near Anthro, Ohio, and I left the panel to go to rallies. That's nothing on your panel, it's just we don't have rallies in Philadelphia. Oh no, I totally understand. I left the con to go get FUD records because we don't have them in New York. Wonderful. Like Alright, <laughs> so status, uh, you got a song for us? I do. Well go right ahead. I'm not going to improve your reputation at all. It's though. okay. Alright. It's so gone. Look, the moment the sock puppet molestation happened, the <laughs> reputation was gone. But we fulfilled our FCC obligation. Still getting paid, right? Yeah, paid? Sure. Yeah. Payment. You have a law degree and you owe me money. Payment and gratitude is a thing. <laughs> Status, I'm sorry, go ahead. You're totally fine. I love your hair, I love your name, I love the way you say it I love your heart and you're so smart cause you gave away it I love your sister, I love your dad, I love your mom But more than all of that I love the fact that you are dumb enough To not realize everything I've said has been said before In a thousand ways, in a thousand songs Some with the same four chords Oh girl, I hope you don't think that I'm rude When I tell you that I love you, boo I also hope that you don't see through this cleverly constructed room. It's designed by a marketing team, cashing in on puberty and low self-esteem. Girls desperate need to feel loved. America says we love a chorus, but don't get complicated and bar us. The meaning might seem missing. We need to know the words after just one listen. So repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff. songs about her, just to make sure that they'll spread it like the plague, so I describe my dream girl as really, really vague, like, I love your hands cause your fingerprints are like no other, I love your eyes and their bluish, brownish, greenish color, I love that when you smile that you smile wide, and I love how your torso has an arm on either side, well, if you're my agent, you might be thinking, oh no, sound me alarms, you're not appealing to little girls who don't have arms, but they can't use iTunes, so, like, Whatever. Oh, girl, I hope you don't think that I'm rude. I'm going to tell you that I love you, boo. I also hope that you don't see through this cleverly constructed room. Designed by a marketing team, cashing in on puberty and low self-esteem. Girls desperate need to feel loved. America says we love a chorus, but don't get complicated and forest. The meaning might seem we need to know the words after just one listen So repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff Repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, repeat stuff, yeah I'm in magazines full of model teams So far above you So read them and hate yourself And pay me to tell you I love you I love you <laughs> And your parents will always come along Cause their little girl is in love And how could love be wrong? How could love be
was expecting. <laughs> But a scathy criticism of teen pop music capitalism was not it. I'm actually kind of happy that. We, yeah, we just went from a really fucked up show to witty and urbane. Is that a dildo on the floor? Chris, yes. your, your stuff was witty and urbane as well. It was just shocking. Yeah, that's it. Shock humor, yeah. I, I, your stuff was wonderful because I'm pretty sure you'll find a match later and I'm scared to tell you otherwise. He was on fire. Status, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, another one more time for Status the Fan. We have come to the end of yet another late show. We have, haven't we? We have. And uh, you know what that means. That means turn out the lights, get everybody go home. No, it means you have to perform. What do you mean I have to perform? You have to perform. Really? Yeah, I, like I feel the words are English and very clear, so... QED, yes, that's the proof. Yes. Well, uh, I've been working on a little something, and considering the amount of money that went into that hat, <laughs> um, I, I think I have to do it. I, think I don't know do. what's about to happen, but something is about to happen. Oh, God. Are you taking your pants off? Well, it's an educational experience, so Do we're going to- Do not take your pants off. <laughs> yeah. That was not my pants. <laughs> Mostly. Oh. <laughs> that was weird. I didn't know that. Um, but, but there was a lot of money put in that charity hat. Yes, and, there was. And to, to further our education, I think we should put everything that's been said, especially that last song, we, we should put that to the test and do something that's really catchy and really fun and something you've never seen me do before. Uh, okay. Okay. This I, could go really bad. It, it could really be could. Like, and I'm <laughs> this actually, is your show. Like, I, I'm halfway between excited to see what you have planned and very nervous that this is how I get canceled. Uh, <laughs> so, folks, can we have a round of applause for my co-host, Iggy. This is going to be fun. I don't know what's about to happen. Backflip. No. <laughs> Frontflip. We're going to try to do this. Let me grab. Let me grab something from off stage. I don't like kick the dildo off the stage. <laughs> it's here now. Wait, can you get that from Pharaoh? Can we put it on a chair? <laughs> like the, 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 dildo. the dildo. The dildo is amongst friends now. <laughs> Place the dildo inside one of the socks for Carrie. Be nice, that dildo seems to be shit. Oh, yeah, my innocent socks is quite a doozy! No, it's not even good. Hell yeah! Oh, alright. You know we have a plug it's down it's below. <laughs> well, this is about to get interesting, but Citrine said go ahead and do it, so we're going to do it. Plug it in. I don't know how plug that's going to sound. We're going to find out. Plug it in, plug it in. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know all the chords. We also don't know all the lyrics. Neither does Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that drunk, so this is going to go... Why should we improve the show now? <laughs> all right. We have sound checked none of this. Normally I do this unplugged, but we'll see how this goes because it'll probably sound better for you guys. What do we got? You can actually see things. Can I see my things? No. We'll see how that works. Um, sound okay? Yeah. All right. All right, so this is something. This puts together all that educational experience. This actually, all right, cool. Hopefully this works. Here goes nothing, just bear with me. November promises, it seems, a broken February dreams that don't come true. I don't remember, this is the hard part, remember you. 
Were you the one who liked to sing? Or were you some other one? It seems it's strange how Paige remains the same. She stays the same and we're... Hang on, we gotta get to the part that makes you feel good. And we're... Oh, we also have to scroll, I forgot about that. The printer doesn't work down at the, at the business thing, but eh, this works. Uh, and we'll take it and we are changing to the rest of the band. All right, cool. And we're all changing. We are driving on the ceiling. There are aliens on motorcycles hiding in the radio while they devour the world. I said, oh, 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 no, no. The music read the papers dead when Elvis went to Hollywood. That's when everything went wrong. Citrine, we're going to be doing a show Sunday morning before the charity auction, and maybe you'll see more of this, but it'll definitely be a rousing show of music and things. And folks, that will be in the show. One more hand for all the great performers we had tonight. A big hand for yourselves for hanging in there. I am Boozy. Thank you so much for joining us. You have a wonderful night and a wonderful rest of this convention. Good night.
So I got your man. You video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe. <laughs>